Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Hello, this is James Helm of Helm Enterprises Forging Division in my shop just south of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, it's been three years since I made a video for YouTube. Just wanted to talk about a couple of knives that I'm getting ready for my table at Blade Show West in Salt Lake City, October 4th through 5th. So these two knives are kind of an interesting project to me. Um, they are inspired by the two knives featured in Rambo Last Blood, designed by Deep Marpole. They are not by any means a direct copy or an attempt to, but in my mind, um, these are knives that John Rambo may have made sometime in between the end of Rambo 4 and Rambo 5 Last Blood. Um, they tie in some design features from several of the movies together. This big one is the first of the two that I made. Um, it was an instance of me not having a full plan when I started out and letting the steel kind of show me where it wanted to go. I had actually pulled out a blade preform and tang um, about a month before I finished forging the blade, just having it on hand. And as I worked on it, my idea of what it wanted to be changed a few times. And right at the end, I was like, you know, that looks like it's heading in the direction of the heart stopper from Rambo Last Blood. So it is not exactly the same shape. It does have the raised swedge at the front, which in the case of this one is fully sharpened as a recurve. The blade is just over 10 inches, but instead of being very nicely finished, um, some of the production versions that you can get from the Stallone official shop or CNC machine. This is rough forged, um, kind of tying in the blunt ended chopper from Rando, Rambo 4 that was rough forged with a nice, nicer done paracord handle. This is black paracord for the underlay with stripped olive drab paracord for the overlay and intact olive drab for the Turk's head knot. It's all impregnated with West System Marine Epoxy, so it's solid, it's waterproof. The Rambo 4 chopper had a handle that was paracord, just round and round wrapped with some grip tape on top, very quick and dirty. This is something that takes more time and effort to make, but it is not highly polished, highly finished G10 and I forget what particular stainless alloy that they're making the blade on the production versions out of. So this is based on the buoy, also from Last Blood. Um, this is a similar blade shape, but it is a smaller proportion. This has a blade that's six and three eighths inches long. That one is about eight inches. Um, top edge is also fully sharpened on this. Same materials, the steel that I'm using is ADCRV2. The same paracord wrap impregnated with West System Marine Epoxy. So kind of the same notion of being inspired by without being a direct copy of the Last Blood Knives. So as part of this conception of these being a continuation of Rambo's knife making career that has spanned 40 plus years now, um, going by the movie timeline. This ties in concepts from the first, second, fourth, and fifth movies. Uh, we do not have a detachable axe blade, so the third movie is out. Well, we shouldn't talk about the third one either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the first two knives designed and made by Jimmy Lyle are at least in part based on Air Force survival knives where you had a hollow handle that you could store supplies in. The outside of the handle is uh, wrapped in cord that you can remove and then use for making snares and fish lines and stuff like that. Um, the fourth one uh, was very quickly made based on Southeast Asian choppers that are blunt ended. Um, the third one 
is more finely finished. It's also a pretty big change in the approach to the knife making, which frankly, I, I did not like the heart stopper at first when I saw it, but it grew on me. I do like the designs quite a bit now, uh, but they're very different from the previous approaches by Jimmy Lyle and Gil Hibben. Um, I think Deep, Deep Marpole did a good job on the designs. But so we have the notion of a survival system based on the knife, like we saw in the first two movies. Um, but we have moved in a different direction. Instead of having leather sheath, we now have Bolteron sheaths which by the very nature with the eyelets makes for a great system to attach extra survival gear. So rather than compromising the design of your main tool to be able to store cordage and store survival equipment on the knife, you do that on the sheath instead. So on both of these, I have a good deal of the same olive drab paracord that was used to make the handles. You'll notice the handles are darker. The marine epoxy that I use does darken the colors down. It also makes it solid and waterproof, but it darkens the colors. So you have a whole bunch of cordage on there that is easily accessible without making the handle of your knife compromised by trying to pull it off of that. Um, just have it wound around. I have it looped through the end here, so if you want a small piece, you can undo the loop and pull off the mount you need, cut it off, and just tuck that loose end back under the remaining cordage. And then as a very nice addition to these, I have uh, Lester River Bushcraft uh, Universal Sheath Pouches. So these attach onto pretty much any size sheath using this bungee cord. It's laced up like a corset. You just loosen it off, slip it over the sheath, and then tighten down in progression, and then use the little slider toggle thingy, whatever the term is, to tighten it down. And this is on here very solidly. It's not gonna fall off. It's not gonna get bumped or slip while you're hiking. And then if you need to take it off to access any other survival gear like cordage up here that is underneath it then you just loosen that off loosen off the bungee cord and that slips right off and it's got a snap opening here that's a fair amount of capacity there so you could fit quite a bit of stuff you could put a fire kit you could put fishing supplies a sharpening stone there's a fair amount of space in there that's probably higher capacity and easier access than what was available in the hollow handles that you see in the first couple of Rambo knives or in uh, Air Force survival knives. So this ties in that survival aspect with the rough forging, with the pushing the design direction more into a fighting role with less you know, utility. So the more straight up fighting designs, even though it's still tying in the survival aspect of it. So I thought it was an interesting little mental exercise and of course physical project to be built. These will be once again at my table in um, Salt Lake City at the Blade Show West show. To. I was going to make a joke. You can fit like four people in that bad boy. Oh, <laughs> okay. This will fit so many Skittles. This will, look, you can fit a donut in there. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> this will fit so many Skittles. <laughs> so much room for activities. Tater tots. <laughs> you can put tater tots. You can put a whole serving of tater tots in that. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, uh, I did want to mention that... You know, we have olive drab and we have uh, woodland camo on there, but uh, Lester River Bushcraft, they make these in a wide range of different material, or excuse me, different patterns. They've got multi-cam, multi-cam black, um, ranger green, 
and he actually sent me a pretty good handful of them that I'm going to have on my table for folks to see and buy if they want at the show.